Every day you unload your boat on a body of water, even if it's a body of water that you fished thousands of times, that particular day, that particular moment you're fishing is different than any other time. Sure, you can go fish memories. Sure, you can fish those old tried and true honey holes for the locals that have been on a lake for a, for a long time, but the reality is the conditions are a little different. The bait that they may want might be a little different. How they want it presented may be a little different. The, the reaction, the retrieve, the, the entire moment is always a little different. And once again, yes, you can go back to those memories, but always keep in mind when you launch your boat, just like we are right now, to keep an open mind. Fish something new, do a few things different every time you go out. Right now, I feel like the fish should be on docks. They should be all over these boat docks. We're past the spawn, the, fish, the shad are starting to spawn. It's an early morning cloudy day. We should be able to work boat docks all day long, but I can promise you the way I catch them at the beginning of the day will not be the same on those same docks later in the day. So we're gonna dissect boat docks as we go fishing today. Boat docks. Boy, I mean, they come in so many different configurations. I mean, you might find them sitting in a foot of water. You might find them suspended out over 150 foot of water. They may be giant marines with hundreds of slips, and they could be just an individual dock in a cove by itself. But all of those boat docks have an attraction to fish. You know, the bait fish might be seeking cover. They might be finding forage there, and then when the bait fish are there, Obviously the bigger fish come and then bigger fish after that, which provide you with angling opportunities. When I start looking at boat docks, there's a lot of different ways to break them down. Uh, you've got floating docks, you've got big large floating marinas, you've got some that are anchored uh, on, on pillars or poles, they're basically a permanent dock. Uh, you've got others that float up and down. Uh, you've got constant level lakes that you might even have a concrete dock built on. And then you've got other docks that could end up on dry land because the lake itself is low. So when you start digesting or analyzing docks, know that you've got a lot of different scenarios that you can be uh, dealt with to help find fish. You look at this dock right here, the way the wind's blowing in on it on a little bit of a point, a couple of spawning pockets off to the side. It's a fairly shallow dock. But it's got these cables coming out off of it where they're you know using it to be anchored down and uh, it's a dock you can fish really fast you know see if there's something there and then move on down to the, to the next spot fairly quick look for that reaction bite you can see that cable coming off right here i want to hit out away from it a little bit even fish it down there's been times with crankbaits even in the winter time where I've caught lots of fish on cables and getting a reaction bite when that bait would hit that cable. Totally deflects your bait. So if you're watching those cables, a lot of times they can be where they're setting up and holding that. Oh, got him. Got him. Finding the right boat dock on a lake that's littered with them can be a difficult task. How do you determine which one you want to fish? Is that dock going to be holding any fish? For some of fishing's top professionals, they say the goal is to find a dock that is different from the rest. So when I'm fishing boat docks, there's two things really that I'm looking for. One is something that's different. I want to look for the dock that sticks out furthest from the bank, or maybe a dock that sets you know, on a ditch or near a ditch, just something a little bit different. An isolated dock, that's a big deal for you guys because you know, if there's 20 docks in line, you watch, everybody will run and fish those 20 docks because they can just go. And there'll be one dock a quarter mile away. I'm telling you, that's where the big is at. <laughs> yeah. If I have a choice to pull into a bank and fish 20 boat docks that are exactly the same, or fish one dock over here that's sitting on a point or sitting a little bit further out, every time I'm gonna pull over here and fish the one that's more isolated, something that's a little bit different. Doesn't take as much time to fish it, but I, I'm usually just looking for something a little bit different. Isolated, 
and the ones that stick out the furthest. So that would be the tip I could give you on fishing docks. There he is. A little better one there. A little better guy there on his dock. He come up behind it and thought he had him a meal. hooks out of there and let you go just fishing down a windy side of a dock that can really pay off at the right times go back in there grow up you know you just got to decide how to fish it every day and you know you can skip these docks with a swim jig or something like that and catch them probably pretty good on a good sunny day today we've got a, just a little bit of overcast and light rain and i just feel like i can take a jerk bait and probably fish a little faster a little more aggressively and pick up a few bites but for whatever reason i'm missing as many as i'm catching time now for our first break but when we return wade begins to capitalize on those bites as he works a jerk bait around floating docks you can see by the size of their bellies, they're just gorging right there. I mean, they're just every cast throwing in there and getting a bite right now. Stay tuned to learn about fishing boat docks in and around marinas right here on the Fisherman's Handbook. As people who love the outdoors, we know what we stand for. We stand for fish, wildlife, and conserving the places they call home. We stand for the traditions we inherited and that we must pass on. We stand for great gear, fair prices, expert service, and memorable experiences. At Bass Pro Shops in Cabela's, we stand together for you. For 50 years, Ranger has led the way in innovative, high-performance designs, and we're raising the bar again with a bold new flagship line. The Ranger Z Comanche L Series. These rigs are custom crafted with a passion for perfection and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver domination at every level. The next generation Ranger L Series. Celebrate a legacy, 50 years in the making. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Garmin, fight your fish not your fish finder. And by Yamaha Marine. Reliability starts here. 12 months out of the year, fish live on boat docks. I really don't, it doesn't matter where you're at. I honestly believe a lot of fish live underneath marinas and docks year round until they spawn and they go right behind the dock, they spawn and right back. They have everything they need underneath the dock. This episode of the Bass Pro Shops Fisherman's Handbook is focusing on how to catch fish around docks. Docks offer an obvious target for anglers to pinpoint and catch fish on. The next topic we're going to cover are marinas. Marinas are loaded with docks and provide a variety of cover for fish to hang out in. You know, I look at, at big marinas uh, a lot of times. I love to fish those at certain times of the year. In a big marina, I, I mean, I fished them on, let's just say a Lake Travis. Uh, it might be, you know, 100 boats in there. It could be houseboats that are 100 foot long. It could be little bitty boats on the back end of that. All the way up to commercial areas where you be in a marina where you're gonna find barges, uh, where the, you're gonna find construction boats, and all of those present a different way to catch fish. Out here in 63 feet of water, fishing floating docks. You know, but the thing about it is, the river channel kind of swings in close. There's one right there to this bank. You've got a great bluff, wind blowing on it, lots of brush around it. You look down on the depth finder, and there's fish all around it. So you never know whether it's going to be a shallow dock or deep docks that are going to pay off. Yeah, pulling into a giant marina, usually in the marinas, they're gonna use the shallow part. I mean, I actually think that fish, they move throughout the day. They may be in the deep, up to the shallow to feed, and back out, but usually on a marina, they're gonna use the corners, inside corners, outside corners. That's just the most prevalent ambush point that they have. They can sit there on that corner when the wind's blowing and catch everything that's pushed to them. This might be a little better fish, or he's just a lot meaner. 
I mean, literally, when you look at the graph, we're 73 feet of water now, and you can see the bait on the bottom is suspended everywhere. And you can see by the size of their bellies, they're just gorging right there. I mean, they're just every cast throwing in there and getting a bite right now. Just goes to tell you, you gotta kinda study the situation to see what the fish are doing. Deep docks and shallow docks. As today's show has progressed, one particular topic seems to be the main point of discussion. How do you pick the right dock and know where to find the fish within that particular structure? One key piece of equipment that can aid in this search for the perfect spot is your electronics. From locating the bait fish with high definition sonar to quality mapping that can help distinguish one dock from the other, electronics are key when dock fishing. So what I'm doing right now, I feel like I'm trying to learn where all these boat docks are in this area that I'm, I'm fishing. Right now I've eased into a marina that is a pretty big marina. You see all these big docks that are kind of going through here. It comes out, you can see all the contour lines that are drawn there, and you can see all these single docks that are along the edge. And I'm just trying to get an idea so I don't waste a lot of time idling what I've got further back in this creek. I personally feel like I probably need to be running main lake docks in the wind right now. Uh, taking advantage of a more aggressive bite. So I'm just gonna kinda say, okay, I know what's back there. Maybe I'll come back here later on, throw a shaky head around or fish a little show, a slower drop shot. But I feel like right now I need to be out here on this main lake stuff. And you can actually see a big channel swing with lots of tight uh, contour lines right here and docks just scattered all the way through it. It's probably gonna be a better, higher, uh, concentration of fish. So by using my electronics in the manner that I'm doing right here, I'm not going to have to idle all the way back there to eliminate that water. I was able to go through it, zoom in, see what I'm looking for and go from there. And the final thing is I've actually set this up with satellite photos. Now I don't use satellite photos a lot. Primarily when I use the satellite photos, I'm fishing in urban area, which is kind of where I'm at now. There's a lot of development and everything because it gives me a little bit better feel for docks and boat ramps a lot of times that I may not necessarily need per se on a satellite photo when I'm fishing a lake like a Sam Rayburn. Um, it doesn't have all the development, doesn't have all the docks on there that, uh, that I'm wanting to target right now. Coming up next, we dive deeper into the details that'll help you catch more fish around docks. Oh, we got it that time. I'm throwing a floating jerk bait right now. Find out which baits can be productive under certain conditions when this episode of the Fisherman's Handbook continues. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all new Yamaha V8 XTO Offshore. You sons of fishes. Ain't enough fish on this lake for two clubs. Really? Well, we see plenty of fish live with pan optics. Yep. Dang, we should get pan optics. Or maybe we'll just take yours. What's going on here? You boys have license? Yes, yes sir. sir. Nope. <laughs> there he is. Oh, I got him. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Engel, the original high performance cooler. Sunline America, the strength to guarantee your confidence. And by Bradley Smoker, food smoking made easy. Boat docks are great areas to find fish. The ecosystem around a boat dock can be comprised of a wide variety of creatures and other elements. Throughout the year, the pattern of these fish can change, meaning different baits will produce in different situations. You know, pretty much the baits that I use for dock fishing are jerk bait. You're gonna call them out in the spring, uh, a jig or a worm, 
and then a, a top water, you know, depending on the time of the year. I know a lot of guys that uh, are tournament anglers that when they can find a shad spawn going on around some floating boat docks or stationary boat docks, they're going to run and gun very fast and they're going to look for a lot of shad flickering, running the outside edges, and they're going to fish fast moving reactionary bites to draw those uh, bass up and get them to ambush it. And in those situations, running a spinner bait, running a chatter bait, a swim jig, maybe even a jerk bait are going to be a key way to get bites. Oh, he smoked it. Oh, he got it that time. I'm throwing a floating jerk bait right now out here. You know, they come in floating and suspending size, but once that water temperature gets up above a certain degrees, for me, that's a, about 65, 64, after they spawn, really. I really want to go to that floater. Shad are not the only bait fish that will congregate around docks. Brim and bluegill will also frequent these man-made structures. Panfish are able to feed on the smaller prey and items that can be found around docks. When targeting opportunistic bass that are feeding on brim, a jig can be a great bait to use to get bites. You know, one of my very favorite ways to fish on lakes that got stationary docks on them, either metal or wood, is with a jig. The reason I like it so much is those big fish will get around those docks. They'll get up under the docks. Sometimes they'll be on the shallow parts. Sometimes they'll be on the deep parts. Now that one was way up shallow. The first couple we caught were out deeper on the dock. That one was right, oh, I'll get in here. See a little bit of grass right there, but that fish was way up under that dock. And every fish is just a little bit different. Good, healthy looking fish up under that dock. There's my jig. I love the skipping jig because I can actually slide it way up under that dock, skip it way up under there, and work every bit of the dock. You gotta have a little bit of room. I need about that much to really skip well. If it's only that far, a lot of times the skip will hit and it'll still hit the dock, but if you got that much room, you can slide it up under there. Sometimes they're on the outside poles, sometimes they're at the very back, but fishing stationary docks is a way you can catch some huge bags of fish. Look at this fat football on my fish right here. Look at that fish, that is so pretty right there. Man. Now I was actually working that bait pretty slow. I had skipped way up under that dock. And that's one thing we found on these docks today, you gotta be way up under there. One thing you gotta realize is, is that, you know, it, next day they may be on the outside. You may be fishing something fast, but today it's gotta be flipping or skipping, pitching something up under the dock. Fish, beautiful fish. In other scenarios, fish may decide to suspend around the poles and supports along docks. This typically happens when there are bluebird skies and fishing conditions are extremely difficult. By pulling out a spinning rod and throwing a wacky worm, you can greatly increase your chances of catching a fish. Got him. He's on the end. It's a good Pretty one, good dude. One too. Nothing wrong with that. He was out there on the end. Yeah. Them fly fry garters. <laughs> Good I job. Lose my, weight, my bait. Stay on there. Yay for Wade. Yay for Wade. Yay, Yay Wade. Uh. <laughs> I love to throw a wacky worm. I love the bite, dude. It's one of my favorite bites. So far today, we've learned many of the ins and outs of dock fishing. After the break, we continue to take a look at docks, discussing the many variables that define this pattern, as well as catch a few more fish. Secrets are created to protect information, but keeping a secret is not as easy as it seems. For over a decade, anglers across the nation have used secret lures tackle to reel in their catch. From small ponds to large bodies of water and tour level events, the secret to their success has been tied to the end of their line all along. They've been using secret lures. First you've heard of them? Maybe your fishing buddies aren't really your buddies. Visit secretlures.com and place your order today. When I talk about Sunline, 
I think of one word, confidence. Sunline FX2 is what I use for all of my frogging and flipping. SX1 braid, which braid plays a little big part in, uh, in fishing line. Shooter, I'm gonna use in those close quarter deals, like flipping and pitching. One of my favorite techniques in fishing the tournament trail is to fish offshore ledges. We have taken the, the questions out of the equation. Take my word for it. It works, it works, dude. At Sawyer, we use the best technology to make simple products that keep you going regardless of your journey. So whether you're boating, hiking, fishing, camping, or hunting, we keep you outdoors with a full lineup of products to both protect you and make the outdoors more enjoyable. Sawyer, we keep you outdoors. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Sawyer Products. We keep you outdoors. Secret Lures. The secret is out. And by Hobie Fishing. Mirage Drive Pedal Systems. Welcome back to the Fisherman's Handbook. As you've seen throughout today's episode, boat docks can be a great place to catch good numbers of fish. But not only do they offer large quantities of fish, boat docks can also produce quality. You know, I love flipping boat docks because I feel like you just have the chance to catch some of the biggest fish in the lake. If somebody brought me a million dollars and said, you need to catch the biggest fish in this lake, if it has a boat dock, that's probably where I'm gonna go. Golly, that was a giant on there with him. Well, the big one's on there now, I got them both. I got them both, I got them both. He came back up after him, I got two of them. I threw out there on a cable. Look at that big in there. Oh, the big one's on there and the little one's gone. I had a little bitty one early. Golly, stay away from that cable. I had a little bitty one, about eight or nine incher, and coming across that cable right there. Lay on there, buddy. You got one. Look at that post spawn. Boy, he's skinny. I'm going to leave him out of the water long, man. Real long post spawn fish right there. He come up, knocked that little one off the off the deal. How long that fish is. I bet that's an old one. We're just targeting single docks through here and there's cables that they're using to anchor these docks in place and they're kind of running out in front. And they'll go out and you can run a crankbait or you know if they're shallow enough, you can run a buzz bait or spinner bait across them. I'm actually throwing jerk bait kind of out four or five feet in front of these docks and sometimes I'm hitting the cable, most of the times I'm just jerking in over those cables and picking up a few fish and in the case it just happened right there, really neat. We're uh, jerking along down through here and as I'm reeling in another nine, 10 incher, I see a big one behind it and I just kind of throw my rod around to the side and this is not it, this is another fish here. And I just throw my rod around to the side and a fish you know, that I had on that was about the size of this one I just caught here, the big fish knocked it off and I actually hooked the big fish with one hook in the top of the mouth and, and land the big fish. And you know, you're looking at a real old fish that we had right there. I mean, he was, you know, thin and big eyed. I mean, in his prime, he was no telling how big, but well past his prime, but that was pretty fun to hook an old timer like that, the way it went down. That's the thing about dock fishing, there's always a lot of fish on the on those docks. It's just dissecting every piece of the dock to find success. Boat docks and marinas. Big boats and little. They're gonna hold some fish. Thanks for watching this episode of the Fisherman's Handbook. This has been a Caraco TV production. Tired of forgetting to set a recording or missing the latest episode of your favorite outdoors show? Check out Outdoor Action today. Never miss a second of shows like Americana Outdoors, Cabela's Fisherman's Handbook, and Whitetail Diaries. All of this at the press of a button without a subscription fee required. Start watching your favorite shows when you want to watch them by going to OutdoorAction.com or through the Outdoor Action channel on any Roku device. This tube is the greatest thing in the world. When you're catching fish on it, it builds your confidence. To me, that's the most important part of bass fishing, is you have to have confidence in this bait when we're throwing it.
I've had guys say, you fish like you believe there's a fish there. Well, I do. I'm feeling everything that I can feel with that bait. If you need to get bites, it'll just absolutely get bit. Here at Big Bite Baits, we've got a big line of different plastics, and you know they're all a tool, so you want to have them with you all the time. I made several checks in crowded areas, flipping that right there. Just a six-inch Big Bite Crete tail worm. Here at Big Bite, we came out with four brand new colors this year. All four of these colors are going to be great fish catching baits. Definitely my number one go-to bait that Big Bite has out right now is the Big Bite Battle Bug. Big Bite is leading the way when it comes to innovation and colors. Many said that we were just obsessed when we started, that there had to be an easier way to smoke food. As time passed, the Bradley family created a lineup of Bradley electric smokers that has made it easier for the novice or even expert chef to get perfect results every time they use it. Grab yourself a Bradley smoker and take your cooking to an all new level. We demand a lot from the products that we use on our adventures around the world. When it comes to keeping things seriously cold, we rely on Angle Coolers, who have for over 50 years kept things cold. Angle Coolers, the original high-performance cooler.